Okay. So I will be talking about a new justification plugin that uh, I've been implementing. It's called Parsec. And first of all, why uh, it's a password based? So it's uh, supposed to replace all the password based plugins with the time, at least. Yes. But why <laughs> haven't we learned how to make authentication plugins in uh, the last 20 or 30 years, right? We have three of them already, maybe even more, I don't know. I know three. Yes, so to understand that, let's try to build our own authentication plugin from the very beginning, from scratch. First of all, the setup. We have client and server and the network between them. Yes, if we wouldn't have a network, some things could be much simpler. But here we always uh, suppose that we can be heard. Yes, somebody can be on our Wi-Fi network, 3G, whatever. So this is why sending password or just simple hash cannot work, right? So I just no doubt. Okay, let's try another one. Uh, let's, uh, for example, add some uh, generate by client, some random. Yes, then con con concatenate with a password and get a hash of it. Okay, and we send just both uh, this random nonce. It's called, let's, let me just denote this nonce. Yes, and the hash. What will happen if we will be sniffing? Well, if we will sniff the string, we at least cannot recover the password, yes? But we still cannot, uh, can uh, authenticate. We just uh, save the string and send it to server. And we are authenticating. So something a little bit smarter should be made. So the idea is that server is sending another random string first. Let's go scramble. So we complicate our hash now. We add another random. Now, yes, if we save this string, for example, now uh, the sniff sniff cannot uh, read us. Well, it reads us, but no luck. The scramble will be different next time. Okay, so nobody authenticates. And this is how we have uh, two plugins that work this way. The old password, I guess, is uh, remaining from MySQL and native password that is default in MariaDB now. The difference between them is that they use different hash functions. I don't know which is the old password. One is just uh, written by hand, so some custom hash. And in native password, we use uh, double SHA-1. Then, uh, well, comes another problem. Okay, maybe you have a good security at home and uh, uh, you don't suppose it, but when we develop our authentication plugin, we make a security consideration. The table can be stolen, so we cannot save password and it doesn't actually make sense to save a hash of a password. Why? Go to it to my presentation. So this is another way the adversary can compromise us. It can uh, build a rainbow table, so the reverse of your hashes. This is why, uh, for example, I had before, uh, what? I had before nonce plus hash. Yes, uh, this is what will prevent, for example, the user from reversing uh, this string, uh, the password from the string, yeah? But still make authentication. Huh? You can also a little injection as well. And... Wait for it. <laughs> Yes, so uh, the approach can be to store salt, salted password, yes? This means that uh, every password has its own random string. Every password, and this is also important because if not every password is salted, again, you can build uh, against uh, a fixed uh, string, like uh, that is usually called uh, pepper. Yes, uh, it's own random uh, rainbow table. So it can be compromised again. This at least guarantees that if this table is stolen, nobody cannot, uh, the password is not compromised, yes? But the problem is that we can still authenticate with this string. So actually, these two plugins uh, doesn't make you safe from this attack. If you know the soul and you know the hash, then you can create the random table just for that one user. Yes. So you can still find yeah, it. Yeah, the rainbow table, you can just do brute force. Yeah, brute force, yes. The brute force still works. Yes. To compromise the password. Yes. Uh, let's talk about later, okay? I need to think. Okay, uh, yes. 
And in, in this scenario also we need to at least a little bit um, adjust uh, the protocol. Yes, we just send at the salt also we send salt. salt and the salt has salt. to be within global for the whole server. No, no this... because you, you don't know the user, so you can't have any uh, salt per user. This is why we first send salt with uh, the scramble. You do, you, if, if, then you have to be global because otherwise. Yeah, this the client also sends user first. Okay, I for, also didn't do it just on slide to minimize the space. Okay, so what can we do with this? I will have to make a little bit of uh, yeah detour into asymmetric signatures, asymmetric sig uh, cryptography. So what we want to do now is uh, we want to generate uh, a signature with the uh, asymmetric uh, cryptographic functions. What we will have is a key pair, it's a private key and public key. So we suppose our setup is two functions, sign and check. Sign accepts a message and uh, with the use of private key generates a signature. Well, a message plus a sign, a sign part. And then we have a check that uses a public key. The question, of course, is can we build these two functions and the, the pair of these keys? Well, at least if we have uh, the cryptographic functions, uh, well, encryption and decryption functions, yes, we can try to do it. So let's make our own at home. So let, you know, let END denote the symmetric encryption and decryption functions. Yes, and then we will build our sign and check functions. Okay, so my proposal is it can be uh, looked like this. We will encrypt the, uh, the hash of the message and using the private key and just concatenate with the raw message. This, is will, this will be our sign function. Then when we check, we split it again back into message and signature part and we compare Again, the hash with a, a decryption using the public key over the encrypted hash function. We decrypt the fun hash function, yes, and compare. I have a question. Why do we need SA5.12 at all? Because we, when we do the private key, it actually will be encrypted already. It's, it's, SA doesn't really add anything. Because that's the whole idea with encryption. You don't need two levels of encryption. That, that, sure. Yeah, it doesn't make sense to store the uh, the encrypted message of this uh, length. No, from security, no. A anyone, yes, can read the message, but someone who owns the public key can verify it. The sign uh, signature is just of the small length. Okay, so just to shorten, okay? But it actually, it can be longer. Makes sense. So now we will have, uh, we will try this approach. First, we will store the public key, only the public key. The private key is left unknown for the server. Yes, okay, it should be somehow derived, yes, by the function denoted as f from the password. We still don't know how to do it. So the server sends scramble again, and we sign scramble with the private key. Make sense? Then the check function just uh, returns OK on fail. This is what we have in uh, our last generation uh, called with an unpronounced ED25519 um, authentication plugin, which has, uh, well, we already talked about salt and nonce, and uh, actually ED25519 is a, a well known uh, cryptographic signature algorithm, which is, well, it's nice and fancy, but we use a customized version of it just to make it a little bit faster and that uh, apparently break, uh, breaks compatibility with the uh, different libraries which you would want to use. The so, whole idea is that it shouldn't be fast, usually. I didn't say about fast. fast. You said fast, not Fancy, fancy. Okay, okay. well, the, the you mean, yeah, maybe, maybe you mean fancy. Okay, okay, that's okay. <laughs> yes. So what's the problem with it? Now we have it. The man in the middle. What does it do? It pretends it's a server and it, say, it sends scramble equals zero to the client. So then the client always signs a zero with its private key, right? Then what can uh, our man in the middle do? Again, 
it can build a rainbow table and pre-calculate every answer. Or maybe a lot of answers. Just enough to apparently have successful authorizations. Yes, by the cheap price. It's probably doing the rate rate tables, probably do that on the fly on the video now. Especially connected with the uh, birthday paradox. Just... Um, How does that help? Because for a real server, you will not get a scramble zero. No, no, no the, I mean, the middle can the scramble, make the client to sign zero, and then it's the calculation. Because... Yeah, the man in the middle can log in with this approach. No, with, the, with this approach, the man in the middle fails to authorize. But it pretends it's a server and it gets a signature of zero with our private key. This is what it does. In this part, it doesn't try to make a su successful authentication, but it can make it by just proxying. Then it can change the table to reverse and then still can get the private key and then it's not okay. So, let's see again. No salt, no nonce. Let's add the salt and nonce to this scheme. And this is what Parsec does. I will close by bits, so you can't really do a rainbow. So, sorry, Monchi, please. So we now send uh, two things from the server again, salt and scramble, and we sign, okay, S is uh, it's an exception, uh, nonce and scramble with uh, something derived from password. Well, basically with a password, with a private key derived from password. Let's uh, see what's under the hood of Parsec. Yeah? What's S again there? Oh. Nothing. It's a mistake. Typo. So no, no S plus. No S, no S, no S. Nonsense scramble. Yep. It what does the man the minute prevent from just uh, sniffing the traffic without knowing the password? I mean, if, if we assume that there can be a man in the middle, and you have no, uh, the server doesn't authenticate itself towards the client, there can be a man in the middle. If there can be a man in the middle, you can just forward all authentication packets and listen to all the traffic and inject uh, new commands. You can do that if you have no uh, security, extra security layers, for example, encryption. If you have TLS, all of that doesn't count because everything is encrypted uh, and you can have a man in the middle. If you have a certification. Not quite. Yeah, for example, we need to verify the uh, certificate. No, we are talking about. Okay, I, I have a slide with this authentication scheme, just a little bit, uh, five minutes. Two. Yeah, of course you can replace something. Oh, so salt, you, you, salt you cannot replace it. Right. Well, you can, but it doesn't give you anything. Yeah, but yeah, it means that the sign is still something you can do with a rainbow table. No. In here, uh, the password E. We also have random nodes. This is protecting us. Numbers. One from the server, one from the client. You cannot replace the random number from the client. Beginning in the middle. So it will still get every answer, every, different answer every time. Okay. Oh, yeah, I'm missing the salt on this uh, scheme. It's actually used to generate the private key. Just let me return to it a little bit Nance. later. From the client, yes. not the server. That, that's what Nance is, like Nance is uh, yes, it's generated by a client. This is what protecting us from in the middle sending that way. So under the hood of Parsec, there are several advantages. We use uh, this uh, fancy ID to 5519, and this time we didn't make mistake of uh, making our own um, derivation from this algorithm. It uses the standard OpenSSL implementation and the implementation that is in GNU TLS, actually in the sub-library called Nettle. And all the randoms, all the hashes are also from the, uh, those libraries, so you get extra security uh, of the um, manufacturing standard. And also we decided to use pbkdf2 function, uh, which uh, is um, uh, unciphered like a key derivation function, pb, I don't remember what this, but this means that this is supposed to use for deriving your key from the password. Actually, this function, all this function does is it uses some hash function of your choice, salt, and a number of iterations. We use now more than 1,000 iterations. By default, it's uh, 1,024, and salt is uh, 18 byte long. Nonce and scramble are 30 by, 32 byte long. This gives a, a good uh, protection, and it conforms many uh, uh, research uh, 
uh, cryptographic research recommendations. Well, with a, one little bit of grain uh, of salt, we cannot use BigCrypt and Encrypt from Windows. Apparently, their implementation is shown to be incomplete and it cannot derive a public key from a private key. All the rest, OpenSSL, uh, Metal, and uh, many other libraries that conform the standard uh, implementation of this uh, ed 255 y9 they uh, succeed with the doing that. Yeah, by the way, it's... Um, wait. Yeah, it, it's important that uh, 512 bits is... Uh, let's divide. It's 64, yes? Bytes. Yeah, that's kind of important. That it matches. So the whole scheme looks like that. Yes, we suppose that the uh, TCP and the cell handshake is done. And then the server is uh, the first one who is uh, making the uh, fir first handshake. He send, uh, server sends uh, the default plugin and scramble. Some scramble. But if we already have SSL, do we really need to do any of this? Because SSL uh, will be that uh, if you have a unique key, we already know who the user is. Good point, Ponty. If we have a certification server, and if you trust the certification server, th then of course. But we also have a mode, uh, zero configuration mode. In, in that case, it has the certification using the password and it's done just in the end of this whole scheme. So this part is uh, left unprotected for men in the middle, apparently. But our scheme made, makes it. So uh, unfortunately, right now we have extra round trip to change the plugin from default because the default is kind of mm, built in, but we are working on it. So we send a scramble, then client re responds with a username, makes sense, right? And this is why we all only now can uh, reveal the salt. We send the X salt, which is combined as, uh, yeah, the hash algorithm that is used. Now we use BKDF2 and SHA512. Number of iterations to make uh, the hash processed and the salt. This is what we call X salt. Yeah, the hash algorithm. And then the client responds with a, what I just denoted as a challenge resp. The string you already are familiar with. And this is how we just generate a private key with a, yes, with also salt and iterations. Uh, with nonsense, you actually mean concat. As with plus, you mean concat. Not that we are you do, do, doing a plus of two numbers. Yes, uh, plus here on strings denotes concatenation. So why don't you use the concat oper operator? Just chosen it. Yeah, it's it's, it's code anyway. Yeah, it's not my, my choice. So what are we going to get soon is, yes, we are going to resolve this uh, plus one round trip uh, issue. And also we will try to pre-save X, X salt. So the handshake will look really smooth and well fast enough right looks good for well how can you cast exalt when you don't know the user uh, you do no the client can catch the exalt but the same user and then you should have to get the connection but then you can't cast it in the protocol so you can't send this out until you have got the user yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. if it's the same connect and connect many times yeah. yes uh, okay, just for let's repeat for everyone. The question was, uh, how can we find out the X salt and cache it? Yes, if the connector, it's connector issue. If you, for example, have a web server that uses the same connector in the same process, many times makes connect many times, you can pre-cache the X salt already known from the server and just reuse it. We will update the protocol to be able to log in with it. I still don't understand what you mean caching because the server already have everything in memory for the users. No, the client should have some. Then if you remove one down, 
Well, typically when we have, for example, a web application, yes, it can make uh, several connections. But and this all can be a single process. Yeah, but uh, if it can't, then the server can kind of fake the client to think that you don't need to use a salt. Or, yeah, then the client won't be able to connect. Have you looked at how, how, many, how often correction, connection is re-established in applications? Because I don't think that's actually valuable. Uh, because, for example, with max scale, the, it will be a different connection the whole time. Every every connection is a different user. The connector's team opinion is that it's very important. But if you do, do, do max scale, this will not... It, at least the next connection will not be the same as the previous one. Well, let's talk about that, okay? Because, uh, well, it makes sense in many scenarios. I don't know about max scale. I didn't talk about max scale with anyone. And if you have lots of users... Uh, so how do you define, uh, know that you are connecting to exactly the same server and everything else in, in the connector because you can go through a, uh, through a some middleman who then will send you a connector to different servers, the different salts. You don't know that. But how, do, how, how can you say it then to the connect, connector or the, in the client? Maybe it's configuration. Yeah, we have mm, some ideas. Yes, because sometimes, for example, you go to the uh, a slave, sometimes go, you go to the master, and you are still using the, the, the same port, port and server. Port and server for the uh, for slave and master? Yes. Then you go to max scale, that happens. Ah, if, if mask scale. Then you authenticate yourself to mask scale, not Mm. You see, we should ventilate this question with the max scale team because there is no answer that I can make right now presenting. So, if you have some questions that don't fit uh, our timeline, please find me. My name is Nikita. I'm a senior software engineer in MariaDB Corporation. And you can find the documentation and the ways con to contact me with this QR code. Okay. I think uh, I'm done, and by all the rest, we can talk. We have uh, time tomorrow, yes. Thank you. The MariaDB Foundation is the global contact point for collaboration on MariaDB server. Our work is made possible thanks to the support of our sponsors.